Hello students, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a video today on our assignment in Microsoft Access. This is for our forms, it's chapter 3. And the one that we're going to be working with is the Aspen Falls Electricity Billings. And uh, by now you should have the, the file open. Uh, so there's three parts to this, uh, this assignment. There's the instructions which uh, you should print out which are in MS Word. There's the access database file in which we are going to modify and make changes to. And lastly, there should be an image. It should be a logo that we're going to have to insert in one of our steps. So there are three files to this assignment. Make sure you have the right one and we can go from there. Uh, obviously, step one, they tell you to start access, open it and save the file as uh, your last name and first name, but you know by now, uh, just, you know, whatever you save it as is fine. There are no marks associated with it. All right, step two, it says, using the form wizard, create a form based on the billing cycles. What I want to draw your attention to is the fact that it is saying based on. When you read that in the instructions, that should tell you that you should make sure that that is the uh, the actual table that is selected before you jump into the wizard. If you notice here, billing cycles and residence, we've got two tables here. We want to make sure that the billing cycles is selected. It, you'll just run into a host of problems if you do not have that one ready to go. So we're going to make sure billing cycles is good. We're going to click on create at the top. And we are going to choose the form wizard right here. So we're going to click on that. And now what it says for 12 marks, they want us to choose the appropriate fields in the following order. So first they want a count number. We're going to double click it and then cycle date, double click it and rate, double click it. And then we have electricity usage. Perfect. And last but not least, we have usage fee. So make sure you confirm that you have the right ones. I count one, two, three, four, five fields. I've got one, two, three, four, five fields here. It looks good. And so basically it wants us just to uh, follow the wizard and accept the defaults. I'm going to click through next and voila, it wants us to change this. And when I tried this with the old software, I just want to make a disclaimer now, I've installed the latest version of Access, so I should be up to date and I feel good about it. But uh, when I ran this through the old software, I misread what this form was supposed to be called. It's actually called Charges Form. All right, and I'm just giving you a heads up, we all make mistakes. I actually called it changes form. So I had an N instead of the R. And when I uploaded it, my mark was low. I was like, what the heck happened there? And then I realized I am human and I made a mistake. So just make sure you are typing it in properly. Don't be me. And uh, the name of the form is charges. All right, I'm going to click finish. And voila, I've got myself an amazing looking form. See, charges form up here. The five fields that we selected looks pretty awesome. And that is 12 marks. Step three, it says in the charges form, align the text in the five text box controls to the left. Okay, so basically what they're referring to is that they want all of these to be following the left hand side. All right, so sometimes you have to change the view that you're in in order to be able to make that adjustment. So I'm going to click on this view here at the top. And now what it'll allow me to do is select multiple ones like so using the shift key. So just a heads up, you can't see my fingers, obviously, but uh, holding the shift key, it allows me to select them all. And then I can move them to the left if I chose to. Or I can go up here to the format and choose left here as well. Okay, so that's alignment left. So that's basically what they're asking you to do there for six marks. It says for step four, in the charges form, add the following new record. All right, so I'm going to go back to home tab and I'm going to change it back, uh, the view. So that way I can actually see my, my uh, number down here. I got one of 72. And it wants us to, in step four, add the following new records. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the 
new record button at the bottom. Once I do that, I got to be very careful and type it in as I see it. So 4420-209636, the cycle date, and this is, I want to be very careful here. I did notice I made this uh, mistake in the practice that I was doing before in the old software. So I have to, uh, I have to tell you, just be very careful because the date got changed on its own. So I've typed it in properly now instead of just uh, putting in the numbers like I did the first time. So just keep that in mind, 31-JUL for July-18. And it says the rate should be 0 0.07623. And the electricity usage is 242. And watch what happens. Click inside there, and voila, we have a new charge of 1845 this is automatically calculated for us based on these two fields here and that looks awesome all right so basically it says now that we should save the form and we are going to close the form perfect excellent and that is step four step five says use the form tool to create a new form based on new billings query so there's that based on again now like i said earlier make sure if it says based on that you have this selected before you do anything else it'll just make your life so much easier all right so we got that new billings query it says change the title and so on and so forth all right so what we're going to do we've got this selected we're going to go to create here at the top and now it wants us to do a form. Perfect. Because we selected the new billings query, it automatically set us up so that we can see the form as it should be. It says change the title controls text to new payments form. All right. So right now it's taking on the name of the query. So they want us to go up here and they want us to change the name. And you got to be careful. Remember, this is where a lot of the marks get uh, get lost. So we're going to go new, and then it says payments form. Perfect. It says set the width to the table second column to four, and then save the form with that name, and then close it. So, okay, so this is, ten, this is uh, 12 marks. Pretty cool. So basically, like we did earlier, they want this would be the second column. Okay, so this is the first column. This would be the second column. And so what we're going to do is you click the first one, hold shift, and you can keep going down, keep clicking with your mouse, and that should select them all. Now it says change the width to 4 inches. So what we're looking at here at this point is 7.8. No, we want it to be 4. So we just go in here, press 4, press enter. And now all those fields, that second column, has been resized to be 4 inches. So save the form with the new payments form name and then close it. Okay, so now we're going to go uh, save at the top. Make sure that you, uh, you change the name here, right? Because this is giving us the old one. So we're just going to click in here. And this is going to be new payments and then form. Oops, i to make sure I spell it good. New payments form, and then I'm going to go OK. And at this point, I am going to close it. Step six is asking us to create a form using the form tool uh, based on the residence table that will provide a subform based on the billing cycle table. And so again, we're looking at the based on. And what we need to do is we need to make sure we have the right one selected. So we're going to go to residence over here, and then we're going to go to create, and we are going to choose the form option. Now, what you need to keep in mind, and something you probably don't know if you haven't explored the database, is that the residence table has a relationship with the billing cycles table. And because of that, we now see a upper part of the form and then a lower part of the form if there's no relationship this does not appear okay so that's just a little background information so that you know that the most important thing is to make sure you have the right 
table selected before you then go and create the form. All right, so once we've done that, it says save the form with the name residence form. Okay, so pretty simple. We're going to uh, save and we're going to give it a name and this one should be residence form. Now keep in mind, this is 12 marks. This is, the, this is like a bonus 12 marks because in reality, uh, you know, it's a lot of marks for doing something very simple. So there we go, press OK. Now it doesn't say to close it or anything because I believe we're going to continue working with it. Uh, step seven, this is for six marks. Now it says to, in the residence form, replace the logo using the file that we've downloaded. All right, so basically, we're going to click here on the left uh, of the residence. And over here, what you want to do is you want to go over and you want to change the logo right here in the in the ribbon here so design tab logo and once you do that then you got to go and find your file wherever you may have saved it so just keep that in mind i always stress guys you need to know where you're saving your files otherwise you could uh, run into trouble so anyway long story short it looks like city hall i found it we are in good shape and uh, we can continue on from there in step eight, it says, in the residence form, apply the default zip code input mask to the zip text box control. All right, so let's find that. So here's the zip. So what we need to do in order to uh, fix the properties here so that we can add the input mask, we got to make sure it is the one that's selected. If you take a look at the top here, it says auto logo because right now city hall in mine is selected. Watch what happens when I hit the zip. I click there and notice now it is the proper uh, item that we need to make adjustments for. So now what we need to do is we need to go under data under this tab and that is where you're going to find your input mask wizard. So we're going to click over to the right. I'm going to click these three little dots. And so basically what this is telling us, it just says apply the default zip code. So we're going to click on zip code here it doesn't say to do anything fancy i'm going to click next i'm not going to touch anything because it wants it default click next i'm not going to change anything here again because it didn't ask me to and then i'm going to click next and finish now you're not going to notice anything uh, substantially uh, substantial happen but just know that that is exactly what they want us to do Step nine has us dealing with the residence form and adding some new columns so that we can move some fields around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the property sheet dialog box so that it's out of the way. And once that's closed, we're going to add three columns to the right here. To do that, what we need to do is go to the arrange tab at the top and we need to insert three columns to the right. So we're going to go insert one insert two and insert three. Now it might be really hard for you to see, but there are now three columns available to us that we can move things around. I'm gonna resize my left uh, over here because I want to be able to see this a little bit better. Once I've done that, it says to move the electricity meter label to the first empty cell to the right of the account number text box. All right, so this is the account number text box. So we need to move the electricity meter label. And these are labels. These are the text boxes here. So we're going to go up here and I'm going to drag and drop and let it go. So now I've moved the actual label from here to there, which is really, really cool. Once we've done that, it says move the electricity meter text box control to the empty cell to the right of the label that we just moved. Okay, well, that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go here and we're going to drag it over there and we're going to let it go. Once we've done that, it says set the width of the column with the electricity meter label to 1.5 inches. All right, so I need to make it because right now the problem is you can't see the information. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that our property sheet, so design tab, property sheet is available. And once I have that open, I can go to the format tab and I can change the width to 1.5 and press enter. 
I'm going to close the property sheet so I can make sure that the change has made effect. And voila, now I can see the full electricity meter and the actual reading here as well. The last part of question number nine says merge all of the cells in the row with the subform into a single cell and then save the form. So basically what they're saying is they want the subform and the three columns to the right to be saved as merged. So we're going to go shift, shift, and shift. Notice I got one, two, three, as well as the actual um, subform. And then I'm going to go to format. Actually, I'm going to go to arrange here, and I'm going to merge it. So under the arrange tab, I'm going to click merge. Perfect. So now the subform actually goes all the way across. Now it might not seem like a big deal, but that's really just for aesthetics. And um, now it looks great and it is ready to go. So let's save the form. Perfect. All right. Now, step 10. While we're still in the residence form, it says switch to form view and then find the record for account number uh, 4420. 209636. So what we need to do is we need to go to the home tab and we need to change the view. Now keep in mind when you're searching for an account number like they're asking, make sure that you have the account number field selected. At that point on the home tab, we have this magnifying glass which allows us to find. Once you click find, you can type in what we're looking for. So we're looking for 4420 dash then 209-636 and if you click find next it will take us directly to the actual record we're looking for then we can close this dialog box it says now that we found it we need to record a paid date for this uh, invoice that we had done earlier so now what we're going to do is we're going to just type it in again we want to be careful it's really uh, nice that it allows us to type in things without having to go through the calendar uh, dialog because that usually takes a lot longer than just typing it in. The issue with typing it in, though, is you got to be careful that you do not um, make an error in your keystroke. So if you uh, put an error in there, you can really mess up the data. So it's, it's good and it's bad, but for what we're doing, I think we're pretty safe. Now it says add the amount paid of 18 45 and then when you tab out you'll notice that your balance is zero right because the usage fee was 1845 you just paid 1845 the balance is zero at this point they want us to save the form and close the form perfect Step 11 now is asking us to create a navigation form. And you'll probably remember uh, us going through the slides and, and me explaining that to you. It's like a user interface that allows the end user to cycle through different forms that are in the database. And so it's a really cool feature and we're gonna do that now for six marks. So it says create a navigation form. So we're gonna click create. And it says a navigation form. So we need to go to navigation. And it says to choose the vertical tabs left layout. So we're looking vertical tabs left layout. We're going to click on this. And what happens is it's going to allow us to drag and drop the actual um, fields or forms that we want. But before we do that, they want us to make a change to the way that the button looks. So in order to change this button, we need to select it. Once you have it selected, you can go to the Format tab at the top. At this point, we're looking for a quick style. And uh, it, you know, if you don't catch that in the instructions, you'll have yourself looking around and around and around for it. But it says, if you, if you look at it, it says Intense Effect, Dark Red Accent 1, Quick Style. So they actually say it, but it's easily missed. So I'm going to click on Quick Style, and it says the second column. So this is the second column. And then the sixth row. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's right at the bottom. And if we can confirm it, it looks intense fact. Uh, dark red accent one. Perfect. Not much changes on the button, but you know what? It looks slightly better. And that's what they want.
All right, so step 12 now for the last six marks of the assignment. It says in the navigation form, add buttons for these forms in the following order. So basically what you do here at this point is you just simply drag the forms in the order that they tell you. So residence form, drag it right on top of there. Perfect. And then it says the charges form in between next. Perfect. And then the last one is the new payments form. So that's the order in which they want your navigation form. It says set the form's modal property so that the navigation pane closes whenever the form is open. And we talked about that briefly in the slides as well. And so what we're going to do is we need to make sure that we have the design tab selected and the property sheet open. Once the property sheet is open, again, be very careful at what is selected. Right now it's pointing to the navigation button. We won't find the modal option with that. So we need to select on this arrow here, we need to go to the actual form. Once we select the actual form, you'll notice that when we get to the, um, the property sheet and then we go to other, you will see the modal is set to no. All right, and so what we need to do is we need to change it to yes. Once we do that, it says to um, save the form with the name navigation form. So we're going to go save and make sure that it comes up navigation. And then we're going to click OK. And then they want us to close the form. At this point, they'll want you to uh, close out of at Microsoft Access and upload your file through My IT Lab. And once you do that, your mark should be a hundred. If it's not, then you know, shoot me an email and we can see what's going on. Maybe I made a mistake. Sometimes that happens, as you already know. And I've you know, I'm told you I'm a human guy, so it does happen sometimes. But either way, that's the gist of the actual assignment. And I hope you guys, uh, you guys get a better feel for it. And uh, as you practice it more, you will be even better at it. Anyways, we'll see you in class. Thanks for watching, and you guys have yourself a great day. Take care.